facts. This is Let Me Explain 101. Plain answers, no jargon. If you've survived the last few summers without hearing the phrase climate change, congratulations, you must live under a rock. And ironically, that rock is probably getting hotter too. So what exactly is climate change? Let's keep it simple. At its core, climate change means long-term shifts in global temperatures and weather patterns. Not just, it's hot today, or we had a cold winter. That's weather. Climate is the big picture the average of weather patterns over decades or even centuries. When scientists talk about climate change, they mean the Earth's climate system is warming overall, and it's happening faster than usual. Now, the Earth's climate has always changed. Ice ages, warm periods, dinosaurs hanging out in tropical swamps, all part of natural cycles. What's different this time is speed and cause. For the last 150 years or so since the Industrial Revolution, humans have been burning fossil fuels, coal, oil, gas. That releases carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. And just like a greenhouse keeps plants warm by trapping heat, these gases trap heat in Earth's atmosphere. More gas, more heat. To put it in human terms, imagine your house with double-glazed windows, thick curtains, and then someone wraps it in bubble wrap. That's Earth right now, holding on to more heat than it used to. The average global temperature has already risen by about 1.2 degrees Celsius since the late 1800s. Doesn't sound like much, right? But remember, that's the average across the whole planet. For climate, one degree is massive. So, what happens when the planet heats up? Glaciers and polar ice start melting. Sea levels rise, flooding coastal areas. Heat waves become longer and more intense. Storms get stronger. Droughts last longer. Wildfires spread more easily. Basically, the weather throws a tantrum, and we're stuck living with it. Of course, skeptics say, but the climate always changes. This is natural. True, but natural changes happen over thousands of years. What we're seeing now is like watching a film on Fast Forward, and the fingerprints of human activity are all over it. We can literally measure how much extra carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere today compared to before the Industrial Revolution. Spoiler, it's a lot. Who cares, though? A little warmer weather doesn't sound so bad. More beach days, right? Except, it's not that simple. Agriculture suffers when droughts ruin crops. Health suffers when heat waves kill thousands. Economies suffer when disasters cost billions. And ecosystems suffer when species can't adapt fast enough. Polar bears don't buy air conditioners. Coral reefs can't pack up and move. Here's the tricky part. Solving climate change isn't just about science. It's about politics, economics, and lifestyles. Fossil fuels run the modern world our cars, planes, electricity, factories. Shifting to clean energy like wind, solar, and nuclear takes money, time, and cooperation. And while some countries cut emissions, others are still industrializing and burning coal because, frankly, it's cheap. International agreements, like the Paris Agreement in 2015, set goals to limit warming to well below 2 degrees Celsius. Nice words. But global emissions are still rising. Promises are easier than policies. Meanwhile, young activists shout, older politicians shrug, and the clock keeps ticking. So what can be done? On a big scale, transition to renewable energy, improve efficiency, rethink transportation, protect forests. On a personal scale, use less energy, eat less meat, waste less stuff, vote for leaders who take the issue seriously. Will your recycling bin save the planet? No. But collective action matters. If billions of people make small changes and governments make big ones, we might keep things manageable. The irony is, we already have the technology to fix much of this. Solar panels, electric cars, carbon capture, even geoengineering ideas like reflecting sunlight with aerosols. The challenge isn't science, it's willpower. Convincing billions of people and hundreds of governments to cooperate is, let's say, complicated. So, where does this leave us? Climate change isn't the end of the world, but it's the reshaping of it. It's not just about polar bears or distant islands. It's about cities flooding, food prices rising, and weather patterns your grandparents wouldn't recognize. 
It's about adjusting how we live before the adjustments are forced on us. In short, the planet is heating, we're the cause, and the future depends on what we do next. Or, in my language, Earth's operating system is overheating, and the users are ignoring the warning messages. Typical. Stay cool. Literally.